Hello everybody, I hope that you're well because today we're going to talk about film grain. For those who don't know me, my name is Douglas. I am a professional colorist based in Paris, in France, and I specialize in grading commercials, music videos, and longer form. What is film grain? Well, film grain is a visual texture represented by a granular pattern. Originally, you get it when you film with film negative because in film negative, there is silver halide grains that are baked into the layers and it is responsible for the light sensitivity of the film negative that you're shooting with. And the bigger the grain, the most sensitive to light your film stock is going to be. Now, when we shoot digital with our modern cinema cameras, we don't have film grain because we shoot with a digital sensor and not with a film stock. And when we're shooting digital, our images are very pristine right out the gate. And sometimes we want to emulate that granular texture present in film negative. It can be because we want to emulate a certain nostalgia. It can be because we want a bit more of an organic feel to our images. It could be because we want to add more grittiness, more texture to our images. In today's episode, we're going to look at how you can add film grain to your images. And I will also show you a little bit of a hack about how you can add film grain to your images without slowing down your system too much. Without further ado, let's dive in. All right, guys, so today we're going to work on this image and I have a very simple node tree in place. So this image is Ari Log C3. We are transforming Ari Y Gamma 3, Ari Log C3 into DaVinci Y Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Let me disable that for a second. And we are transforming into display with a CST from DaVinci Y Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate to 79 Gamma to 4. And in the middle, we have a um, film LUT that I developed. Um, it's DaVinci White Gamut In and DaVinci White Gamut Out. And upstream of that, we've got a white balance adjustment that is cooling off a little bit our white balance. So that is what our output transform to 709 is doing. And that is the combo of my film lot with uh, that white balance adjustment. But today we're not really going to talk about log development. We're going to talk about film grain. So the easiest way you know how to add film grain is to use the Resolve Film Grain OFX. And I'm going to prepend a node here before my lot and i'm going to go into my open effects and type in grain i'm going to drop that into this node and all of a sudden you see that the texture of my image is changing let me actually zoom in a little bit for you you see that that is before my film grain adjustment that is after let me actually open it so we can just play with some of the parameters and I'm going to crank my grain strength like that so you can see it better over YouTube. So as before my film grain adjustment, that's after. Okay, so let's zoom out of this and let's hit play. Generally speaking, I would place my grain node before my LUT or LUX stack because if you place your film grain adjustment after your output transform, it's going to look a bit less natural and organic. It's going to feel a little bit more, okay, we've slapped grain on top of our image. And if you place it before your LUX stack, it's going to feel a little bit more organic, okay? As a general rule of thumb. And if I open my effects panel again, you see that we've got, let me circle that for you there. So we've got 
texture, grain size, grain aspect ratio, grain strength, offset, symmetry, softness, saturation. We've got several sliders that we can play with. Okay, so texture is going to be, let me adjust that with the panel because it's going to be a bit more um, convenient for me. Uh, so yeah, texture, it's going to play a little bit with a textural aspect of our grain. We've got the grain size, it speaks for itself, so it makes your grain bigger. I'm going to exaggerate it for YouTube here. So you see, you can play with that. Uh, aspect ratio, grain strength, if you want it to feel a little bit more present and accentuate the effect, you can crank that up, okay? And also saturation is a slider I often like to play with because it will add a little bit of saturation to your grain. And if you shoot, if you were to shoot with film negative, with color film negative, you would have a little bit of color into your grain as well. So that could be a way to emulate that, okay? So that is the Resolve film grain. And lastly, I would point out that you have your film grain presets which are here okay and you have different presets you can go 35 millimeter and your grain will become a bit thinner you could go 16 millimeter and your grain is going to be a little bit bigger you have presets that you can play with so that is a way that you can add film grain and now in order to illustrate a little bit of the next thing that I wanted to show you, I mean, today I'm not working with my usual machine because I had to send it to repair. Uh, so I'm working on a less beefier system. And you see that, I mean, I have my screen recording taking place here as well, but I don't have a real time playback. See, I have 20 frames per second right there. So that is because the Resolve OFX has to generate that grain pattern and it requires my machine to calculate and tax my system a bit more and the trick i'm going to show you today is going to lessen the burden on your system let me reset that node and now i'm going to go on my desktop and i'm going to select that print mat I'm going to right click and go add to media pool as a mat. And that is populating my mat folder here. I'm going to go back into my color page. I'm going to go into my media pool folder and see that my grain mat is here. I'm going to drop it on my canvas right there. I'm going to then create a layer node right there. You can press Command L if you're on a Mac or Alt L if you're on a PC, I believe. And I'm going to change my blending mode to soft light. And yeah, my image looks a bit funky, but I'm going to unpipe that and actually pipe my grain layer into that node. And there we go, we've got some grain going on here. And you see that my playback frame rate sits at 25 frames per second here, see? So there you go. I mean, that's a way to actually, another way to work with grain, which puts less burden on your system. And I'm going to label that node adjust. And I'm going to show you something. If I set my pivot point to 0.5, so let me enter that manually, 0 0.5, yeah. And now if I'm cranking my contrast, this one from my primaries palette right there, I'm gonna use my panel, so if I crank it, before, after, before, after, I'm gonna make that image a bit zoomed in for you before after before after so this is before my contrast adjustment 
this is after. Before, after. You see that you can have effect on the strength of the grain by playing with your contrast. You can also change its size. So for example, I've prepped some reference images for you. And if I pull, uh, let me zoom that in for you. So that is a screen grab from Black Swan, which is a movie that was shot in Super 16. And the grain pattern is very specific. It's actually a little bit bigger than 35 millimeter grain. And in order to kind of replicate that, I could pull that as a reference. Let's go split screen. And it's actually, I'm going to try and crank the strength of my grain layer, adding some contrast. Okay. And I'm getting a little bit closer. Uh, if you want to see that over YouTube, you need to set the resolution of this video to the max. Uh, so 4K, if you can. Otherwise, the YouTube algorithm and compression is going to completely kill the texture. Uh, and I don't necessarily need to adjust the size here, but if I wanted to, I could go into my sizing tab, which is right here. Let me circle that for you. Uh, but I'm accessing it with my panel for speed. Then I'm going to go into my node sizing and I can zoom in to my grain layer. See, I'm going to exaggerate it, but this is increasing the size of my grain. So let me reset the sizing before, after, before, after. And let's hit play and see real time playback. And it looks gorgeous. It's of course going to impact your playback performance, but it's also going to impact your export performance. So you're going to export your files faster using this technique than an OFX that has to calculate each frame and grain pattern when you export. So to summarize, I'm adding my grain before my look stack and in a logarithmic space and that will help my grain to feel a little bit more organic so that's let me go full screen for a second so that's before that's after before after grain let's play it full screen hopefully the strength is enough for you to see on youtube and lastly because you might not have a grain plate you can generate one. You can, it's actually, let's do it together. So I'm going to go into my effects tab in my media tab and I'm going to, uh, it doesn't really matter, but let's go for a solid color, turn it into a compound clip so that it can appear right there. And I'm then going to drop my thumb grain here I'm going to go grain only and see it's kind of just showing the grain plate. So let's say I want to go 35 millimeters so that I could have the option to augment the size later 35. And now I'm going to export that just that bit. So now I'm going to go into my export tab. I guess I'm in HD. Yeah, you can turn it into 4K if you desire. I mean, I would actually recommend you to do that, but, and now I'm going to export it on my desktop. And now I'm going to call it film grain Doug. QuickTime Apple ProRes 422HQ is plenty. Add to render queue, render all, good. Now I'm going to go back into my media page and selecting film grain dog, I'm going to add to media pool as matte. Boom, then there we go. Go back into my color page. 
go back to that clip, go into my media pool, and I'm going to drop thumb grain dog here, and I'm going to link it here instead of the other one. And there you go, you've got your own plate. And I'm going to hit play. And there you go. You've got real time playback. And you've got your own grain plate. You didn't need to buy one. There you go. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you've learned a thing or two during this episode. Please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you have questions or future topics that you would like me to explore in future releases. Come and say hi on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And also do not forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss future updates. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.